To watch my lecture, you will mainly use your eyes and ears. But what if you could also include other senses, like taste and touch? Stick around, and I will tell you all about it. What if you could feel this video? This is the University of the Netherlands. My mother is an excellent cook, and I thoroughly enjoy smelling and tasting the food she prepares, and learn how to cook from her. But she lives in Spain, and the screen of my laptop or phone is currently the only way through which we can discuss about cooking. Although we can clearly communicate, I still feel that something is missing. As human beings, we continuously perceive the world in which we live. We develop our senses by smelling, hearing, tasting, touching, seeing. As designers, we create the environments, products and systems that people live and engage with. But while we have extensively adopted our senses, most technological systems we use today rely heavily on our visual sense. Typically, designers focus on the appearance of objects. For example, how your phone looks. And more recently, designers are also involved in the design of dynamic visual properties, such as the things that happen on your screen. But the quality of mobile phone screens and the speed of our networks is nowadays so high that our eyes can hardly distinguish any further technological improvements. Consequently, industry is moving towards the next step, improving the way our devices will sound and feel dynamically. And who knows, maybe one day also smell and taste dynamically. I am especially interested in the design for feeling, haptic interaction design. Haptics address all aspects of touch. And as a researcher, I focus on how we can design for interactive haptic experiences. In other words, how we interact with a product by touching or feeling it. Imagine, for example, how you would interact with screens if you are visually impaired. Despite the fact that you cannot see what is happening, many products are still designed in a way which requires sight. This does not only apply to people who are blind, but also when you're driving, in the dark, half asleep, or your visual attention is already overloaded by other information sources. If such products would allow for interaction by touch, it could be of great advantage in such situations. I foresee a future in which we will not only interact with information in our environment based on what we see, but also based on what we feel. A clear example of haptic interaction design can already be experienced in the Apple iPhone. And I have one here in my pocket. It uses vibrations to let you feel what is happening. Also, in some versions like this one of the iPhone, you can feel a vibration when you press the home button. It feels as if there is a real button. But when you turn it off, and perhaps you could do so after watching this video, you'll notice that you don't get any haptic feedback. It actually feels like a brick. But there's much more than just using vibrations in a phone. Did you ever wonder about the brakes or the accelerator pedals in your car? The harder you press your brake, the more pressure you feel and the more the car slows down. But often, there is no actual connection between the power that you have to use your, for your pedals and the brakes, especially not in electric cars. The pressure you feel is designed to give you control. As designers, we have to understand that how we can design something that matches with what you want and expect a product to feel. Not only can we design for a perfect match, we can also use the way things feel to change the interaction between a product and maybe even change their behavior. The accelerator pedal could, for example, push your foot back to reduce your speed when you're driving too fast, or potentially display an increased heartbeat to indicate that the car is consuming too much energy. Most products that you use today do this by means of visual information. For example, the Nest thermostat is an intelligent product that communicates how sustainable your behavior is by means of a graphic display. It presents temperature with a number and employs the figure of a leaf to inform you regarding your temperature control. 
by changing the on-screen figure of the leaf. It indicates whether your behavior is sustainable or not. It provides information on your behavior, but actually does very little to alter it. In a project by one of my graduate students, we investigated the effect that haptics and a change of shape could have when using an intelligent product such as a thermostat. She designed the Ripple thermostat, which conveys changes in temperature by changing its size. If the temperature rises, the thermostat grows bigger. In addition, it provides a haptic response by increasing the friction when you want to increase the temperature. Setting the thermostat to a higher temperature will cost you extra effort to make you more aware of your behavior. Changes in size not only provide better insights when you cannot read the temperature from a distance, but they also affect our emotional response. We feel more anxious when the size of the thermostat changes. On the other hand, by providing haptic feedback, we believe the intelligent thermostat has more control over our behavior and we may be less likely to overrule its advice. The thermostat is a prototype that works with two motors. And these motors can be programmed to provide the haptic experience and shape change. While the current motors are quite large and bulky, they become smaller as technology advances. And at some point, we could create swarms of these miniaturized motors, which together appear to act as one material. Some scientists are even making motors on a molecular scale. They develop so-called smart materials, which can change their physical properties, such as the stiffness or their size. With these materials, we could develop surfaces that reversibly change the texture. Imagine, for example, feeling the patterns in a textile of the sweater that you want to order online. Or think of how you could caress the interior of your car as if it were a pet. As I illustrated, in addition to visual information, haptic interaction will play a more prominent role in the near future. The technology used for haptics is becoming smaller and developments in material science are expanding the possibilities of haptics. Also, new material developments can allow us to control the properties of material structures, which can behave differently depending on external conditions. One of my students developed a shoe sole that changes how it feels depending on the position or pressure of a foot. His insights could contribute to, for example, the development of shoes that guide the gait of people who are recovering from injury. If materials constantly change, also after we have designed a product, then how should we even design for it? Our knowledge and skills as industrial designers regarding the form of a product, the production, and eventually the use of a product, are mainly focused on the design of static objects that do not alter their shape after they leave the factory. We learn how to sketch an object on paper or in 3D models, and there are multiple types of software to support us in this process. However, how can we also sketch how something should feel instead of look? With my colleagues, we develop methods and tools that enable designers to sketch and prototype the dynamic qualities of devices. We can use paper folding techniques such as origami to study complex material behaviors. With our body, with the movements that we make, we can explore how these models behave. But sometimes, we also need to create more robust prototypes and program more complex behaviors. An example of such behavior can be observed in the Ripple thermostat when it needs to change its shape. Should the transition from a small thermostat to a large thermostat be smooth or spiky? In this video, you can see how these two different types of shape change are designed. A smooth transition is illustrated by sketching a sine curve, while a sharper behavior is created through a triangular curve. Such tools will enable us to program the behavior of products after they are produced and will help us understand how users can adopt them as part of their everyday life. We investigate how users will experience certain haptic properties, the feel of a product, and how products can adapt to their behavior. An interactive product can change its shape and texture. And this is a continuous cycle of the user interacting with the product, the product responding to this interaction, and the user again responding to this change in the product. So how do you see the future? 
Will technology be noticeably present at all time through screens or will it seamlessly fit into a natural environment through touch? Should technology control us? Should we control technology? Or should there be a natural balance between humans and technology? As a designer and researcher, it is not my goal to change people's behavior, but to make technology more humane. The goal is to design technology that is not perceived as being technology, but that becomes an integrated part of our everyday life. In the future, haptics will enable us to negotiate with technology in a more natural way, while making use of our full body. A car was inspired by a carriage which was pulled by horses. If the car now becomes an artificially intelligent system, it may also need to be caressed and spurred as if it were a horse. A first step towards achieving this vision is of course to increase the possibilities of haptics and shape change in current smartphones. For example, to support different activities. In this prototype, you can see how a mobile phone can transform into a game controller when you start playing a game. Haptic design can change our entire way of interacting by shifting the focus from the screen to the feel of it. In a phone, in a car, and in many other products that do not yet exist. It also creates countless opportunities for products and situations where we cannot see. In the dark, when we need to focus our visual attention elsewhere, or even for people who cannot see at all. The digital world as we know it today was designed to connect to our brains through our eyes. But haptics and new materials would enable us to make it make use of a full body. I imagine how at some point I will be able to cook with my mother through the devices that we use for preparing our food. She will be able to feel if my dough is sufficiently stretchy, elastic and bounce back when poked. As designers, we have to imagine the future and investigate how at some point this video could feel. Thank you for listening and watching, and I hope that you could also imagine how it would have felt.